I'd like to start with the comments that I've made to other media units, but I'll make them again. I am incredibly um, sorry for the hurt that I've caused uh, Natalie, my daughters, and Vicky since my marriage breakup last year. Uh, I've re I say that again. I'm incredibly sorry and uh, apologise to the people of New England, but appreciate their immense support that I've received, immense support. And I also state to my colleagues in the National Party, um, I thank them deeply for the support they have given me and apologise once more to them for the inconvenience and the hurt as they have gone on sections of this uh, trial and tribulation with me. Uh, our task, and I'll start with this in the National Party, is to help the people in the Weatherboard Nine. That is why we come into this building, to look after them. In regards to the code that the Prime Minister uh, announced yesterday, uh, of course, it's the Prime Minister's code. And as it is the Prime Minister's code, you know, we support it. And we will do our best endeavours to see it through. It goes without saying that this will create immense fodder for the good people in the media. And it will obviously reverberate across all political parties. I'll go on by saying that I would not wish on friend nor foe uh, the hurt, uh, the scrutiny, um, the, in the intense intrusion into your lives that I've gone through through this process. I would not wish that on friend nor foe. And I think that that's, that's something that has to be managed with the greatest deafness uh, as relationships at times in all workplaces are uh, put under strain and some instances get back together again. And uh, I, I think that you have to be very careful in that space. Um, in regards, um, comments by the national, uh, comments by the Prime Minister uh, yesterday at his press conference. Uh, I have to say that in many instances they were, uh, they were, they caused further harm. I believe they were in many instances inept and um, most definitely in many instances unnecessary. Uh, the reason I say that, it was public knowledge what was being repeated. It was public knowledge that had run on the front pages of papers. And all it does is reinvest in the hurt that is held by other people. Uh, I don't know uh, if I, I have to say that because I listened to it and I thought uh, that was completely unnecessary. All that's going to do is basically once more pull, pull the scab off for everybody to have a look at. Uh, in regards to the National Party, there is nothing that we dislike more that, than implied intervention into the party processes of the National Party. We are our own independent political unit. We make our own decisions, especially around those who are the office holders. Uh, far from assisting, it always does the same thing in the National Party, and I've been around this organisation for over, or for over a couple of decades. It locks people in. It locks people in as they lock in behind the leader. So um, I would not be making comments or implied comments about the leadership of the Liberal Party, and we don't expect to get implied comments about the leadership of the National Party. To go to the issue of the apartment, and I know that's what people have been discussing the last couple of days. When I was neither a minister nor a member, but basically a citizen, and living with my sister, to be quite frank, living with my sister, a friend approached me and said that he would offer me a place to stay. Now, friends do not charge friends rent. And of course, um, that seemed a more stable arrangement, so I took him up on that offer. What is more important, is that apartment uh, that has now been displayed through multiple media outlets and has been noted in its address and everything to do with it. I'll add this, in my time in politics, I've had multiple death threats, multiple death threats. The most recent has been charged, convicted, and is awaiting sentencing. And that was in Armidale. He lives approximately five kilometres from the place that has now been notified. Uh, this, is def this is also completely um, unwarranted and unnecessary. And I ask people just to think about exactly what you're doing before you do that. We live in a, I had to find a place that was secure. That is the nature of it. I think at the start, they hadn't found this guy. 
I need is a secure and anonymous place to, to basically to live. And this announcement makes things incredibly difficult um, for both myself, for both Vicky, and for our child that's going to be born as we try to manage that situation. Now, I conclude where I started. I apologise to Natalie. I apologise to my daughters. And I apologise to Vicky. All these people did not buy the ticket. And they've been dragged in, they've been dragged into that. Our job will remain to looking after the people in the Weatherboard 9, to making sure those who are born in areas where they are not proximate to the advantages of those in the cities have the capacity to transcend through the economic and social stratification of life to their highest levels limited only by their innate ability. That is our task in, our, in this building and that is what I intend to go immediately back to. Now I'm gonna take three questions, right? And that's it. So let, let's go. I'm gonna go. Chris Yulman. You've just described the Prime Minister as inept and he's expressed a lack of confidence in you. How can you continue to work together? Well, I'm, Chris, I'm intending to make sure that like all relationships, that this relationship gets back onto an even keel. Uh, but, you know, I stand by my statement that we are, I'm the leader of the National Party. He's the leader of the Liberal Party. And it's uh, implicitly incredibly important for our nation that these two parties get together and work closely. It's been the most successful operation in post-Second World War Australia. And uh, like all relationships, that is another one we have to work on. Do you accept that? Just simply, um, Mr Joyce, why won't you resign? Well, quite simply because um, that would not be, a, a, it's not a decision of my colleagues. It is a right of the leader of the National Party uh, to reflect on, on where their colleagues are. My colleagues support me. We have a job to do. This was a personal issue, a personal issue that's been dragged into the public arena. And I don't believe people should be resigning in any job over personal issues. Is it a failure to do, do, do you accept that by refusing to resign, you will continue to be a distraction for the government and be and continue to damage the government as it fails to be able to get its message through? No, I don't. Uh, I believe that it is incumbent upon all people uh, to make sure that we get back to the issues that are important. Uh, that's what I what I do. Um, I'm quite um, supported, obviously, by my electorate, and my electorate's a catalyst of getting back to your job. Then the last by-election, uh, we did a very good job. And I'll take one more because... Isn't it a failure to take responsibility for your actions? Sorry? Is it not resigning a failure no, to take No, it's not, because that, 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 is, that is saying that you're going to now make uh, personal issues incumbent upon a job. And in any workplace in Australia, when personal issues become the determination of a job, then I think we've moved to a very sad place. Thank you very much. OK, so there goes the Nationals leader and Deputy Prime Minister of Australia.